Always good to see an old friend. Here's the Loughton Brook. Not actually the subject of today's walk. It's nice to check in with, with this old pal of mine. Lovely to be back in the Roding Valley. I love walking in the Roding Valley. I love all the walks around here. And I did spend quite a, quite a while trying to walk as many of the footpaths, connecting the various central line stations and connecting Epping Forest to the River Lee. And actually, before we get really stuck into the video, I just want to show you this um, plaque up here. And it's... Um, a very special house this this is uh this is donald w gillingham who was an author who wrote a book called unto the fields that was one of those really sort of wonderful accidental discoveries when i was just taking a just a random kind of morning stroll um a couple of summers ago really hot day and i walked along the river roading as far as the uh, Roding Valley Recreation Ground, which is at the end of this street here. I walked up the road and I saw that plaque and I thought, I wonder who that is. And I looked him up on the phone and Unto the Fields was a book that was written in the uh, interwar years when Gillingham lived in this area. And he really kind of, if you like, captured that moment of change when this went from being a kind of almost completely rural area to being swallowed up by the London fringe and it's a really magical book finds like that and books like that are just so precious it's a beautiful beautiful book and it was such an amazing discovery to see that someone had written a book not just about the river roading but just about this short section of the roading between here at Loughton and then through Sort of a bit of Debden and, and Chigwell and really documented this thoroughly in the seasons. And one of the things that really struck me was the way that Gillingham talked about November being the month of frost. And I can't, <laughs> can't remember the last time we had a frost in November, except for today. Uh, there's frozen ice on the pavement outside Loughton Station. And it is freezing this afternoon, really cold. It's hovering just above zero. And I'm really looking forward to today's walk. And so our walk is going to take us along a short section of the Three Forests Way through the landscape of DW Gillingham, over the River Roding, and then across the fields to uh, the edge of Hainault Forest. the Loughton Brook just running along the front of people's gardens soon to make its uh, confluence with the roading with the river roading the three forests way is a it's a long distance path it's 59 miles long and it was devised by the West Essex Ramblers to mark the Queen's Silver Jubilee and uh, as its name suggests it links three forests the forest of Hatfield Hainault Forest and Epping Forest. Of course, all three would have once been part of the, uh, the Great Forest of Essex. And I believe the West Essex Ramblers uh, organise a challenge, actually, the Three Forest Way Challenge, where you have to walk it continuously. And I think people do it in, in, in a ridiculous time. I'll try and find the information online, but I, I think I've read of people doing it in, like, 24 hours, just, just basically just going non-stop for 24 hours. <laughs> sure if this is the final little stretch of the Loughton Brook before it makes its confluence with the roading or whether it's just a drainage ditch. <laughs> so difficult to tell sometimes but there's a, a video on my channel here of a walk along the Loughton Brook. I actually started it up 
where today's walk started, actually, uh, near Loughton Station. And here she is, the beautiful river roading. I really love this river. It's such a special watercourse, this one. I mean, I know they all are, but you're bound to have your favourites, aren't you? I love the design of this essentially very functional object here, just a bench, a covered bench, but it's really been uh, turned into something wonderful, majestic, like a UFO, like a Soviet bus stop. This is interesting. This looks like another tributary here. I don't know what, which one this is. It's not the uh, Debden Brook because that's further along. So I wonder what tributary this is. And look, we have ice here. This is frozen. You can see more ice. This is the earliest frost I can remember for a while. That's this late into the afternoon. I really needed some trees and some open space today. And there's some lovely countryside up ahead on the final stretch of this walk. Once we go across the fields and up through Chigwell to Chigwell Row. I walked it um, a few years ago actually, well, about 12 years ago um, and actually again recently for a podcast called London's Peaks which was fantastic and it's a lovely little pocket of countryside sandwiched in between the, uh, the central line, the branches of the central line. Really delightful and this is manna for the soul today. So as we come up to Debden here, this is as far as I've walked north along the River Roding. Um, and I've never got beyond this point. I've seen the Roding near Abridge, but it's quite difficult to follow from this point. I don't know when the next point where you can really walk alongside the Roding, because it runs through farmland as it goes through uh, Essex, through Abridge and out to Ongar. I will go and to, to the source of the roading, I think, and walk south, walk back from there, I think, rather than try and follow it from this point onwards. But uh, that is for another day. Who knows when? All right, I've got to do a bit of road walking now. There's no actual way to get across this road. There's no crossing here. I'm going to have to uh, freewheel it or walk up towards Debden Station. It actually wasn't that difficult to get across. So we're going to walk up this road for a little bit of a distance and then we turn left across the fields and we'll bid au revoir to the uh, river roading here. And we will see you again another day, my friend. And now we go beneath the North Circular Road. We were walking along the North Circ. And gold is green. Hendon, not long ago, weren't we? You've got a peculiar feature here where the uh, M11 goes around in a loop and goes back into central London. Someone told me that was because uh, the Bank of England printing works are just up there at Debden. And if someone were to rob the bank, so to speak, or rob the bank's printing works, the road they would be on would take them straight back into London and instant capture by the Metropolitan Police. I don't know if that's true or not. D.W. Gillingham does write about Chigwell Lane, which is where we are now. I think it looked significantly different in his time. I don't think he'd be particularly impressed by this development.
So we arrive in Chigwell in the county of Essex with its three scimitars in its coat of arms. This is actually quite a, quite a long stretch of, of road walking for a, for a country walk, but it definitely pays off just up ahead. And we've got a couple of farms along here. Uh, you've got Rolls Park Farm there, which would have been contemporary with when Gillingham was writing, I think. I don't know if it's still a working farm or not, but that would have been here in the days of Unto the Fields. And this is the stables from Rolls Park. It's a very impressive building, isn't it? I have to look up how old that is. At last, here's the turning off the road back along the Three Forests Way. Well, we were on the Three Forests Way back there, but this is heading towards the fields. Here we have a lovely little country lane right on the edge of London. I think this is also now the London Loop as well as the Three Forests Way. This is a section I haven't actually walked as the London Loop, or I haven't filmed it. And this is where we're going to start to get some really majestic views from the high ground here, looking out towards Essex there, I think, <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I know some of you will be thinking, why did you hesitate there <laughs> when you said, I think, looking out across Essex? Where else could you be looking? Well, you could be looking from some of the hills here, you could be looking south over towards sort of Dartford and Kent. That was my hesitation, but I'm pretty sure this is looking east. I could just look at my phone and check, but that would break the flow. Oh my God, it's so beautiful over there. So this is where I join the field paths now. And for the last section, we're up across the fields to the high ground at Chigwell Row, or at least I hope. You know what my map reading's like. I got that ever so slightly wrong. And it's this path here, just off Green Lane, that heads up to the high ground at Chigwell Row, up to the reservoirs there. And it's just as well. I spotted my error early enough because we've got about hmm, 15 minutes till sunset. We are now officially in muddy season. <laughs> it's quite hard work getting across that field. Now it's just up along the edge of this field here and then around a reservoir. There go the geese off on their journey. So this is not just the, the landscape of the London Loop, the Three Forests Way, the landscape described by D.W. Gillingham. But this is also the landscape of a walk in a book called A Foot Round London by Pathfinder, which I think was published in about 1911. And we did a walk through here for the radio show I used to do on Resonance FM, Ventures and Adventures in Topography. I'll put a link below to the podcast. I know some of you have been following my walks since those days. That ran from 2009 to 2011. And I'm looking for the field that we came, because we followed this route pretty much. Although there are a few different footpaths around here. And that was with Nick Papadimitriou and Peter Knapp that day. Nick again, two walks in a row. What's going on? We'll have to get Nick actually in a video soon, won't we? And it was a really, really wonderful walk that. We took a slightly different route across the Roding Valley at the bottom, across the, across the river and around the nature reserve there. I think we turned uh, left around here somewhere and off that road. I'm not entirely sure, but it's more or less the same world. I'll see if I can find the really lovely reading that my wife did of a passage from that book, A Foot Round London by Pathfinder. 
Exploration, I hope no one has said this before, begins at home. All over the south of England, vast tracts of beautiful country, crossed and seamed by countless footpaths, waste their sweetness on the desert air as if they were under some strange ban. It used not to be so. Time was when we were a nation of walkers and used to take to the road and footpath on every possible occasion. And this is the final little stretch here, up to the top of the hill, round the reservoirs. Interestingly, I think it's the path on the other side of this ditch here that I walked down that day 12 years ago, more or less to the day. Never underestimate my ability to go the wrong way. I found myself just <laughs> locked into this field, which is exactly what happened. I did the walk with Nick and Pete that day. I don't really know what to do. Um, I think I will just go around the field and go out to the lane, I think, because as you can see, the light is pretty much gone. I don't fancy my chances of finding the footpath. It doesn't seem to have been um, signposted. So it's been <laughs> quite a while since I've gone as wrong as this and had to completely double back on myself. I don't think I'd be doing this any differently if it were daylight either, because the thing with these fields, although the plan of just going back out onto Green Lane, Vicarage Lane is uh, fairly sound, <laughs> getting there is another matter if I don't go back the way I came, because there's no guarantee there'll be an exit for many of these fields onto the onto the lane. They're all surrounded by quite deep ditches that are filled with water and then thick hedges. So the best thing really is to retrace my steps. But as you can see, now it's, uh, it's nearly pitch black basically. So back out onto Green Lane. And I'm just gonna walk down here now in the dark to Grange Hill Station. I can see where I went wrong actually. It's when the, I thought the, per, the path curved because it reached a dead end, a big muddy field. But um, I couldn't see a path across it, but that's where the path went diagonally across that field. I didn't want to attempt that in the pitch black in case it was wrong. We're out onto Vicarage Lane now, just to walk along the pavement here, I hope. <laughs> and then we're close to Grange Hill Tube Station. Grange Hill Station. Can you hear the theme tune from the TV show? American viewers and other international viewers will be slightly perplexed. British viewers will be now awash in nostalgia at the, the sound of that name, Grange Hill. So now to jump on the Central Line Loop. It's a very strange place to catch a tube, Chigwell. The next station is Redbridge. Please move the gap between the train and the platform. So I've made it back to Leytonstone, across the muddy fields of Chigwell. Wow, what a great adventure that was. And the irony is I nearly didn't do that walk today because I didn't think it was going to be challenging enough. And it's walks like that where things go a bit wrong at the end. They're the walks that you really remember. They really stick in the mind as special experiences. And um, I know in the comments there'll be lots of people saying, telling me what I should have done, but uh, there you go. These things do happen occasionally and walks are all the better for it. That's what makes it more an adventure. So thank you so much for coming on that, that adventure. I was gonna say an Essex adventure. It's just an adventure, isn't it? What a wonderful experience it was. I'm gonna go for a pint now up in the Red Lion. So I look forward to seeing you on the next walk, wherever that may be. Although I have a pretty good idea where it will be and it could be a little bit special. Mm -hmm.